Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and anybody that's new, welcome. So today we are gonna do a flower slash plant shelf, um, more like a bench. Uh, we are going to use the Tumbling Tower, AKA Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree. If you order them, you can order them online if you can't find them in their store. If you are in the US, search up Tumbling Tower game is what they call it, but you can, um, if you search up Jenga blocks, you're not going to be able to find them. So you have to go by that. These are actually found in the toy section. They also come in a blue uh, box as well. And they come in a 72 count. I am going to be using Wellbond. This is my preferred glue. Just make sure that you use glue, wood glue. Don't use hot glue unless you're gluing a piece or two on. But I suggest using uh, wood glue, otherwise it's gonna fall apart. And when you use hot glue, the blocks don't seal properly and it will fall apart unless you're, like I said, you're doing one or two blocks to glue it onto something. Now, Wellbond can be found at the hardware stores, Rona, Lowe's, Michael's, um, Nikki said Hobby Lobby carries it. And I know DT also carries wood glue from I've heard from other crafters, but I've never seen it in my store. so. I just prefer using this one. Working with blocks, you'd like to get a carpenter ruler, L-shaped ruler. You can find this in the hardware section at Dollar Tree. I find that this keeps your blocks straight when you're gluing them together. The blocks are not all cut exactly the same, so you will notice there's off, always a little off with a few blocks as you go along. I do pre-glue a lot of my stuff before, I, before we actually build it all together, otherwise my video is super long. I do suggest getting a pen and paper so you can write down the numbers and the blocks that we use per section. I try to go as slow as possible. If I do go too fast, you're more than welcome to message me on my page on Facebook or Instagram, The Crafty Shopper. Send me a message and I have no problems helping you out. When you use the ruler, when you're going down, it's good to keep them, like I said, nice and straight and even. You can keep moving them up and go as you long if they're just separate pieces or you can keep it one piece together. Now we're gonna start with the back part of the shelf bench. And this is gonna be the bottom part and they're all gonna be flat. And you're gonna have five rows and there is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have 10 10 rows of five. Um, bro, I'm just gonna show you here. I'm just gonna grab a paper. Sometimes it's a little bit easier if I hide the rows. So if you do five across and do 10 rows going down, you will come to this piece. I'm gonna move this down a bit. We're gonna attach now another piece on it and I'm gonna call it the middle piece and that is this one here. We're gonna just glue that right on the middle of like that. There is three on each row and there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's six rows of three, which is 18. And you're gonna glue that section on like that. We're gonna have the sides two and two, and we're not doing them sideways, we're doing them this way gonna glue them on right here right like that we're gonna keep this open now the top part here I'm gonna call it the back top part you can write that down on your paper <laughs> and it's just straight glued across and there is 15 all together here and you're just gonna glue it right like that so you would glue this part here right on as well as the part here so this is the back part so this is a total of 87 blocks now when you are putting it together i'd suggest laying all your blocks out and like i said sometimes they're not straight so as you can see this one has a lip here as you as i went along but when i glued the top on it's i placed them out first i glued this section together as i went along added this made sure it fit and vice versa. I just find laying the blocks out better just for your I just to have I guess the visual is what you want to have and then putting it together. So I'm going to glue that together and I'm going to leave it a couple hours and then we'll move on to the next step. 
Now that I have it all glued together, um, because I'm gonna paint this one white, um, I want to fill in the cracks. And I know there's some there. It just blends in better once it's painted instead of looking choppy. Now I know in a few of my last couple of videos that I've started using this spackle. Now I got this one at my dollar, um, at my hardware store. It was $3, $4. Um, but I heard DT sells this because I see all the crafts made with spackling. So basically it's just wall hole filler. I'm just gonna scoop some out and I'm gonna put it where all the cracks are. Now it's pink right now, but once it's dry, um, it turns white. So then what I'll do is just use some buffers just to sand it down a bit and then paint this this piece white. So I'm gonna do that off camera and then we'll come back and move on to the next step. Now that the back is drying and I painted it white, I'm gonna leave it while it sets. We're gonna move on to shelves. So we're gonna have two shelves. We're gonna have a bottom one and a top one. You're gonna need six, one, two, three, four, five, six. A row of six like this. Another row, another row, and another row, and another row. So you need a row of six times five. So you got one shelf of 30, and you're gonna do another shelf exactly the same exactly the same and you, this will be 60 for the top shelf sorry the two bottom shelves we are making a top shelf for the top part of the stand so you need two of those i am going to do those off camera obviously with the spackle just filling in a little bit of the holes the same thing as i did the back and then paint them white as well we'll move on to the legs gonna need three and three and then you're gonna glue them together like this. And that's uh, six. And then you're gonna need four of them. So then you will have a total of 24. Just like that. Paint those white as well. We are gonna do a shelf. And, um, sorry, lost the train of thought. So there's gonna be a little top shelf on near the top of the back. And we are gonna do just a small shelf and it's just gonna be three. And then there's gonna be three, five rows and that's gonna be 15 blocks. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, a little bit of spackle just to fill in a little bit of the holes here and paint that white as well. We still are going to add the feet and some brackets, but let me get these dried first. Now that the pieces are all painted, we're gonna start putting it together piece by piece, but we're gonna let stuff glue um, for a little bit of time before we, we're not just gonna all glue it at once. We're gonna put the shelf that we did, the 15 blocks. It's gonna sit here and I'm just gonna show you, we're not gluing this on yet, but I'm gonna show you what we're doing prior. It's just gonna be easier to show you why we're placing the way we are gonna place them, if that makes sense. And then the one shelf's gonna be roughly, it's gonna be there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm not gonna stick my head because I can't see. But we wanna put a decal on here. So we've all seen these at Dollar Tree. I wanna put this one and I'm just gonna cut it here, the farm fresh one. And we wanna put it right in the middle between those two shelves. So we're not gonna glue those shelves on because it'll be a little bit hard to do once you have all your pieces and try to get the angle of it. You need to put this on a dry clean surface. Just the white backing comes right off. So you want to make sure, I'm just going to go on the side guys because I can't see without putting my head underneath the camera. So I want to just make sure it's even in the middle, like that. I'm just going to remove these so I can see. And then what you're supposed to do from the instructions on the back is you're supposed to rubbly, rub, <laughs> rubbly, 
That's not a word. Um, I just have from my Cricut, uh, is you're supposed to just rub it on. I'm not gonna do it well in camera because I'm probably gonna go really slow and make sure I get all the letters on. But you just wanna see where it's centered. Make sure it's centered before you put it on and rub that on. So I did get it on. It took me a little while. It took me a good 10 minutes to really put a lot of pressure. And there was still, as I went along, just pressing it. Oh, I shouldn't put it on there. Pressing it, lifting it up a little bit and kept going. But it's still, a lot of pieces, as you can see, is still on. But it, I don't mind the look of that. It looks worn and that's great. Just remember, just keep checking it as you lift it. This is the first time I used those uh, rub-on stents. It says rub-on, it was more like hard. And even using this, I, it said nail on the back, but anyways. Uh, okay, we are gonna put the top shelf, the three by five rows, and we're gonna glue it right on where it hits, just so it's right above there. Now I have these wood blocks that I've had in my stash. I, paint, I only did one coat of white. I will do touch-ups paint after. I kind of like the little washed look already with it, even though you can see the blocks a bit. I'm gonna use these and I'm gonna glue them right under for extra support on the shelf. Now, if you do not have these, these were in my stash and I believe it was from, I don't know, I've had them for a couple years now. Um, but if you don't have those, you do need an extra support. If you're not gonna put anything really heavy on there, then I think you'd be fine, but just extra case. You could put some DT wood cubes and you could do one, two, three, just like that. And then add another two, one stacked on each other. I'll show you sideways view in a second and then one like this. So then you kind of have the look, oops, just make sure your cubes are even because these are not, kind of like the look like that. So it's like stairs, but it just gives you extra support on the top, depending if you want to change out what I, I don't know what I'm putting on top yet, but I'm going to go along, but I know I'm going to probably need the bracket. So that's just another idea if you can't find that. If not, you could also use just a Jenga block or two right on top of each other just for an extra support as well. Or you could cut them as well. So I will glue the back side, the support brackets like that. Then we're gonna take two of the legs and I'm just gonna stick them out just a little bit here right about there, flush to the bottom here. Then we're gonna take one of the shelves, it'll be the bottom shelf, and we're gonna put glue right along the edge and plus on the tip of that, and we are just gonna let it dry like that before we put the other shelf and the legs on it. So I switched angles, now we're gonna put the legs on the front as well as the upper shelf. We're just gonna put them right near the edge and one on each side. I did move these actually over to the edge to be flushed with the back so then you couldn't see the little jagged edges on the end of the Jenga blocks. Okay, I'm just trying to, sorry guys. Well, I'll figure it when I'm, so once you have that on, then you're just gonna grab your top shelf you're gonna put some glue on the four tops plus the two front and bottom posts and you're just gonna stick this on you're just gonna make sure that it's level like that now like I said before the top lip does stick out a little bit more but it is not noticeable once we get that glued on we're gonna move back uh, move on to the feet and the back mesh here now we're going to move on to the feet. I have these doll pegs, which are from Michael's. I've had them for a couple years now. 
I believe I used them for my Jenga block Barbie bed for the post. I think this is what I used them for. Can't remember right at the moment. I am just gonna paint them black and then I am just gonna glue them on just like that. If you don't have something similar that you could use, you could also use some wood cubes as well and just keep them on either side for the feet. Now for the backing of the mesh, I'm going to use these. This is from Dollarama. Um, it's just screen repair tape is what I'm gonna use. Basically, it came in white and black. Just gonna cut a piece off. I will trim it back after. And you're just gonna put it right in well, I'm going to do it the other side. It's sticky and I don't want to push it on yet. But I'm going to trim it a little bit better and it will just go on like that. I think it would look really nice. Now, if you don't have that, don't go out and buy it. If you have some on hand. Um, when I did my Jangle Block sailboat recently, I did use um, mesh like this. And I don't remember if I used it from the rocks or the star, sh the star shells. But you can just cut this accordingly and hot glue it. Right, I'm just trying to show you here because it's hard to see white on white. You can use the meshing from, from and even the rocks come in it too, the white rocks. You could use that as well for just a mesh in the back as well. So in the, um, on those shelves, before we put the stuff in, I wanted to do some little gardening gloves and uh, I was able to find these at DT. I'm sure I'll be able to use, I don't even know, career at all. I don't even know what that is, but it looks like astronaut. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyways, there was two gloves in here. I've already did one. We are just going to cut it. I'm just going to use the scissors here. Oh, I think I cut it a little bit too much. Oh, well a little bit shorter i think i cut it a little bit too short uh i just used some spray paint on it i was getting tired of just waiting for the paint to dry and i found that it was a little bit hard to uh to paint with the with the acrylic paint from dt but i used spray paint so the paint drew, dried really fast i just picked a neon color and i did some little white polka dots and i'm just going to show you now I'm going to do this other one up before we, so this was with the paint and then the spray paint was a little bit better and I was just taking the end of the stick and just little dots like that and I thought it just looked cute um, as just little gardening gloves just to add for a little, a little touch on there. I'm going to get this other one done and then we're going to start putting stuff on the shelf and finish off this tutorial. Now that I have the feet on, it's all glued together. It's hard to see, but the meshing is in the back. Um, we're gonna add some some little decorations to it. I did get a bunch of little flowers like this. They come in different color pots at Michael's, and on the tag it says two ninety nine Canadian, and I got it for half price. American is one ninety nine. So I'm sure you guys have sales down there as well. They were just super cute when I saw them, and I just thought I'd have to grab a few. Who knew what I was going to make it with, use with them? But um, so we are just going to place some. So I'm going to place this big guy, and I can't move the screen any further, guys, but I will adjust it um, when I do uh, a final view of it. And I'm just going to add some of these little toppers up here. Actually, I think I had this one here. I did play around how I wanted to do them. And this one was down here. They're just super tiny and they came with the cute little ceramic pots. This is from DT. I just thought the rooster would look nice down there. Little Hope Rock. They come from uh, DT as well. I glued another rock just so I can keep it upright. Oh, no, that one doesn't go down there. Uh, I had a different one. 
another one from Michael's. I don't remember where I had this one now. <laughs> um, also, DT has these little jars. I actually just put some um, little grass seed in them just so it makes it look like it has little, some herbs or some seeds in there of some sort. I took one of the little cork out and I just clipped a little flower from some of my flowers outside. I'm just gonna stick it there. And what else? I just got some wood, uh, some wood cookies thought would be something a little bit different. And da -da. now this can I got, I don't remember, it was a couple years ago. It was actually on, um, as you can see, there's little holes here. It was actually on one of those little um, garden stakes outside. So I took it off and I know a few people asked me because I have another one that I have in the plant house. I did a Jenga block plant house, two of them last year and everybody was asking me. So it just came from one of the dollar stores and I don't know which, uh, unfortunately, I don't know which one it was. And then we have the little gardening gloves. I just thought the yellow and the green just popped. You could do it any kind of color. You can omit two. Now, I feel like I had another plant here and I don't know where I had it. Okay, well, we'll leave that one out for now. Now I did, I wanna add some, just some, some of the DT Spanish moss. I just wanna add a bit into here on top and a little bit around here, just on the part by the rooster. And I got these from Michael's, um, $4.99 Canadian. I don't know what it was American because I already had the tags off them. And I just added some uh, jute rope on them. And they actually just have little, they're almost like there's little hooks on them that hang. And it, it's probably not the best for you, but I just thought it added so much green and color to this with it being white that I just really liked it. I'm just gonna add the P, or the Spanish moss and then I'm gonna show you a closer All view. right, so here it is. I just think it turned out really super sweet. It was 186 blocks that we used from Dollar Tree. I just like the little flower, it turned out super cute. It just makes the garden uh, gloves really pop. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Turn on that notification bell. It will notify you when I upload my next video. Thank you for watching. Happy crafting and see you soon. Bye.